In this video, I'll be going over the different ways that you can implement my mouse interaction with Pygame. To start off, I've got a couple things here. I've got an image that I've already loaded in, which is just this image. And I've got an offset, a rotation, location. These are just so I can apply some visual changes when, say, a person presses a button or something like that. The purpose is just for showing you what it looks like when there is some mouse interaction with whatever it is it may be. And since this is especially important for this video, I'd like to bring up the fact that you need this line right here. Some people miss this and then they'll get errors saying that th things like quit is undefined. So you'll need to have this line, which imports all of these keywords like that. Anyways, let's get started. So mouse interaction is made up of two parts in Pygame. The first one is just the mouse location, and the second one is just the button presses and stuff like that. So like the left click, right click, middle click, scroll up, scroll down. Uh, so actually first I'm going to do the mouse movement. So that's just, uh, you do mxmy equals pygame.mouse.getPosition. That just returns the mouse's position. I believe there's also a .setPosition function. So you can set the mouse location. There's all sorts of other stuff. I'll link the documentation for the mouse module in the description so you can take a look at that. Anyways, I've set my variables mx and my to equal the mouse position using that function. So if I want, I can set this location, which like if you look right here, I'm rendering the image at that location with this offset applied and with a rotation. So I'm going to use the base location as my mouse position. So this is just being passed over to here for the render location. So if I run this, you can see that the image now follows my mouse. All right, so that's mouse movement. So now is button pressing. So if event.type is mouse button down, that's when you like click or whatever. All of the mouse events are of the mouse button down type. Keyboard events are typically keyed down. And then to get the type of mouse button event, it's event.button. So left click is one, middle click is two, right click is three, scroll up is four, and scroll down is five. So for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to add a clicking variable, which equals false. And when you click down, you set, I'm gonna set clicking to true. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be wondering how do you check if the mouse button is being held down. Well, typically, you just take the combination of checking when it goes down and when it comes up to keep track of when it's held down. So if the button was pressed down but you haven't seen it come up yet, you know that someone's clicking. And then I'll do a right-clicking variable for right-clicking. But this one I'm going to reset every frame, so you only get one frame of it applied. So right-clicking equals false event.button is three. That's going to be for right clicking. So right clicking equals true. Remember that I'm resetting it to false back here so that you only get one frame of being, being true. I use this when I want to just check for mouse down typically. You could also do whatever code you want in here, but uh, typically I like to have a variable dedicated to it where I can use it wherever else in the code. And then middle click can be its own thing. Let's do that too. For middle clicking, let's do a toggle. So if event.button is two, middle, actually I'm going to call it middle click. Click equals not middle click. If you're not familiar with the not, I guess, uh, is it an operator? I'm not sure. Uh, in Python, it just takes something that's true and makes it false, or something that's false and makes it true. Typically, you use this in comparisons, but you can also do it to invert uh, Boolean values from like false to true. So it's good for toggling things. Notice that I've got my clicking here. I need to check if someone's lifted up to see if I should end that from being true. Uh, mouse button up. And if event that button is one, this is a left click. Clicking equals false. So left click can be held down. Right click only activates for one frame when you first press it. And middle click is a toggle. Now I want scrolling up and scrolling down. So if event dot button is four, scrolling up. 
I'm going to do offset 1 minus equals 10. And then if event dot button is 5, offset 1 plus equals 10. These, that offset variable is what I defined up here, and it's applied over here at the render, to the render location, so it's an amount that the image is displayed away from the base mouse location. So that's going to be useful for some stuff. That's just one of the ways I'm showing what's going on. Uh, now I need to show the clicking stuff. So if clicking, that's left clicking, rot minus equals 90, that's going to be a rotation. If right clicking, rot plus equals 180. If middle click, rot plus equals 90. So I'm just making a bunch of rotational changes to the render location depending on what the situation is with your mouse so you can see it taking an effect in the game. Or I, this isn't really a game, but whatever this is. Anyways, let's run this and check out what this is. All right, so I've got the image following my mouse like we had before. If I left click, you can see it rotate right. If I right click, you can just for a split second see it flip upside down. I'm not sure how visible this will be in the video because this game or whatever is running at 60 FPS and a lot of people watch at 30 FPS. I think if I do it enough, it should catch it in one of the frames. And then if I middle click, it'll stay to the left and then I can right click and it'll actually return, or it'll left click and it'll return to normal because they um, counter each other. And if I middle click again, it'll return to normal and I can just switch it back and forth. And then there's the scrolling, which is scrolling up and scrolling down. And I can control that position. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for what I wanted to cover in the mouse movement. If you've got any issues, I would recommend taking a look at the code in the description. A lot of times that fixes people's issues. If you're interested in my work, I've got a devlog series on this YouTube channel for one of my big projects I'm working on right now, which might be you might find interesting. I've also got a Twitter account where I post more frequent updates and a Discord server where people can ask questions if they have any. Um, it's also just a general game dev community. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.